To prepare the sub-assemblies for the new components, we must remove all bushings and ball joints from the control arms. We're going to start by removing the bushings from the lower control arm. We have found that the simplest way to do this with common tools without damaging the control arms is to use a drill bit and drill through the rubber all the way around, removing the inner contents of the bushing. Then we can go back and remove the outer steel sleeve. We also recommend to lubricate the drill bit with some type of penetrating oil. You should also use a drill bit no bigger in diameter than the distance between the inner and outer metal parts of the bushing. In this view of the lower control arm, we can see the location of the outer metal sleeve of the bushing. We're going to take a metal drift and drive it into the bushing, collapsing the bushing into the bore of the control arm and remove the bushing. This view shows the steel sleeve adequately collapsed into the bore of the control arm. Now we can take a chisel and finish removal of the bushing sleeve. This is our compressed metal sleeve after removal. On applications that use the oval type lower control arm bushings, do not remove the metal sleeve after drilling out the rubber insides. Instead, carefully clean all debris from the inside of this sleeve to properly prepare to receive the new polyurethane control arm bushing. A word of caution on the lower ball joints before removal. You must inspect the interface between the ball joint and the control arm in this area. Some manufacturers spot weld the ball joint to the control arm in this area to secure the joint to the control arm. If your application has these spot welds, the welds must be ground through and cracked before attempting to remove the ball joint from the control arm. In our application, the lower ball joint is simply pressed into the control arm from the bottom up. To remove it, we need to firmly support the control arm and using a large hammer, drive the ball joint down through the control arm. This completes disassembly of the lower control arm. Now, we're going to wash it, reassemble it, and then paint it. To outfit the lower control arm, we must install the front and rear bushing and the ball joint. To install the front bushing, we need to support the control arm under this flange. To install the ball joint, we need to support the control arm on this area. To install the oval bushing in the rear of the control arm, we need only to lubricate and press in the new insert. Before installing the front lower control arm bushing, we're going to lubricate the bore with a little bit of all-purpose grease. Now we're supporting the control arm from the outer flange, as mentioned earlier. Going to drop the bushing in place, making sure that the small end lines up through the other hole. Using our proper Econo driver for this bushing, our bearing race, we put it in place over the bushing. Using our steel bridge, hold it in place and drive the bushing into place with a hammer. The bushing is fully installed when the flange of the metal sleeve is flush with the face of the control arm all the way around and the inside of the bushing projects through the other face of the control arm. To install the oval bushing, we simply need to lightly grease the metal sleeve on the inside, 
support the control arm from the flange and press the bushing into the sleeve. To install the ball joint, once again, we lightly lubricate the bore, support the control arm from the opposite face, position the ball joint evenly in the bore using our driver and our metal plate, drive the ball joint into the control arm. The ball joint is fully and properly installed when the flange of the joint is flush with the edge of the bore of the control arm all the way around. To remove the upper control arm bushings, you first have to remove the nut or attaching bolt, the encompassing washer, and then you will have access to the bushing underneath. With the nuts and washers off, we want to grab the control arm and pull it and pivot it on a support arm and lubricate these areas with penetrating oil until it moves freely. Next, we want to use a blunt chisel and strike the outer sleeves of the bushings in this area to loosen the bushing in the control arm, after which we we'll use a beveled chisel from the outside to draw the bushing and sleeve out of the control arm. We start off with a blunt chisel. Next, we use a beveled chisel that's only ground from one side. By placing the bevel against the control arm, we strike the chisel down and it will start to draw the bushing out of the control arm. We do this a little bit at a time moving around the bushing so as to draw it evenly from the control arm. Now we can reposition the control arm and pull it off the other side to remove the bushing shaft. This bushing can now be removed by securely supporting the control arm and driving the bushing down and through with a hammer. If your upper ball joint is held in with nuts and bolts, it has already been replaced before. Removing the fasteners will remove the ball joint. In our application, we still have the original factory rivets holding the ball joint. To remove this ball joint, we must first center punch all four rivets, use a 3 16 diameter drill bit to drill through the rivets, use a larger drill to remove the heads from the rivets, then we can remove the ball joint, and with a small punch, we can remove the remainder of the rivet from the control arm. Now use a larger drill to remove the head. With all the heads of the rivets removed, we must reposition the control arm to remove the ball joint. We want to support the control arm securely and drive the ball joint through with the hammer. Now we can turn the control arm over and with our punch remove the rivets. 
this completes disassembly of the upper control arm. Before installing the upper ball joint in the upper control arm, first check that the holes are large enough to fit the hardware supplied with the ball joint. Sometimes it is necessary to increase the diameter of the hole for the hardware. Do not increase the size of a hole any larger than necessary for this hardware. When installing the upper ball joint, we first want to lubricate key areas. We want to lubricate this area of the ball joint all the way around and the threads of all four attaching bolts. Next, we're going to place the ball joint through the control arm from the top down, slide the boot and boot retainer over the pin in place, install the attaching bolts, lock washer, and nut. Do not tighten any of the fasteners till all fasteners are in place. With all bolts in position, it's time to final tighten them. These bolts should be tightened firmly. And if you have a torque wrench with a 5 16 bolt that we're using, they should be torqued to between 15 and 18 pounds. Once these bolts are tightened, the installation of the upper ball joint is complete. This is how your installed ball joint should look. From the bottom, end, and top. To install the upper control arm shaft, we will first install one bushing, after which we will take our shaft, slide it through the opposite end, through the first bushing, install the retaining hardware, followed by the next bushing and its retaining hardware. First, we lubricate the bore, position the bushing in place, use our other Econo bushing driver, the bearing race, our bar stock, and drive the bushing into place until it's seated around its lip. Now, we need to lubricate the inside of the bushing so that our shaft never seizes onto it. Install the shaft. Lubricate the threads of the shaft. Install retaining washer and nut. We don't need to tighten it at this time. Now we need to install the opposite bushing. Once again, we lubricate the bore, lubricate the inside of the bushing, position it. Using the driving tool and our bridge, drive the bushing into place. If your driver isn't deep enough to clear the top of the threads, you might have to find a deeper driver. Our driver was deep enough. Now we have next to lubricate the threads and install the retaining hardware. What we want to do next is tighten the nuts just to the point where our shaft still rotates snugly. We'll do the final tightening on the upper control arm shaft nuts after the unit has been reinstalled in the vehicle and the vehicle is at ride height.